Hi friends, so today my video is about tracheostomy, which is one of the very crucial procedures in airway management. So if you like this video and the content, kindly like, share and subscribe. Also let me know your valuable comments in the comment box. So tracheostomy, it is making an opening in the anterior wall of trachea to assist the patient in breathing. So if you look at this picture, there is an artificial opening that is made and a tube has been inserted into the tracheal ring and in the second picture outwardly it would appear to you like a stoma. Anatomy, trachea lies in the midline of the neck. It is a cartilaginous tube and if you look here, it is 16 to 20 C-shaped cartilaginous rings. The length is about 10 to 12 centimeter and the width is 15 to 20 mm. Indications, there are various indications of why would you do a tracheostomy. Basically, you can classify or categorize the whole indications into five. First one is respiratory obstruction. Second one is retained secretions. Third is respiratory insufficiency. Fourth is prophylactic measure. And fifth one is adjunct procedure. So, let us look into examples of each of these classification. So, the first one, respiratory obstruction. So, in case of any congenital defects like there is a child presenting to you with a vascular web or a, la a laryngeal web, tracheostomy can be indicated or as a treatment of choice. Second one, in case of acute epiglottitis, in case of neck and facio maxillary fractures, especially to the zone 2 where your crocoid cartilage or there is any other kind of facial fracture. In case of uh, in case of any tumor, like you have a neoplasia obstructing your upper airway, foreign body aspiration causing upper airway obstruction again. Second classification I was trying to talk to you is about uh, retained secretions. So this particular these particular patients don't have the ability to cough cough out secretions basically. So, any kind of comatose patients or patients with respiratory muscle paralysis would come into this category. Next is respiratory insufficiency. So, patients who have chronic lung pathologies can be classified here. Prophylactic measures, patients who are on mechanical ventilation for a longer period of time are suspected to develop tracheal stenosis. So, as a prophylaxis, these patients are put on tracheostomy. Next and the last one is adjunct procedure. So, in various kind of head and neck surgeries, if you see, tracheostomy is also done as a supplementary procedure. So, these are the classifications. So, what is the function of a tracheostomy? It is basically to provide an alternative pathway for breathing. It improves the alveolar ventilation and also removes tracheobronchial secretions. There are various types of tracheostomy. So, if you look at First one is emergency uh, versus elective and the second one is permanent versus temporary. So, in an emergency tracheostomy, there is an acute incident of an upper airway obstruction and a tracheostomy is done. In an elective case, there is a uh, cancer larynx or any such chronic disease conditions and the patient is electively taken for a tracheostomy. Temporary versus permanent is where, uh, which is time based. There is a tracheostomy which is done for a temporary or for an acute incident is called a temporary tracheostomy and the one which stays for a longer period of time or permanently is called as a permanent tracheostomy. There are other types also. For example, cricothyroidotomy. This is also an emergency procedure where the incision is not made onto the second or third tracheal ring. Rather, the skin is cut and then the cricoid or the cricothyroid membrane is slit and then the tube is inserted. So, that is called as cricothyroidotomy. Next one is percutaneous tracheostomy. Here in this procedure, there is a guide wire which is inserted and a hole or a slit is made and based on the size of the tube, the slit can be expanded. So, even some in some of these procedures, a special lens is fed through the mouth so that the view is good. So, this is either called as percutaneous tracheostomy or it is called as minimally invasive tracheostomy. So, parts of the tracheostomy tube. You have the face plate that is this, this plate, the outer cannula, here is the shaft, this opening is the fenestration, this balloon that you see is the cuff, this is the pilot balloon and this is the inner tube. This inner cannula is inserted into this outer cannula and these are the parts of the tube. 
So types of tracheostomy tube can be based on the make material inner tube whether it is scuffed or not, fenestrated or not, does it have a speaking valve or not, armored or not and flexibility. For example, let us look into this protex tracheostomy. So it is made up of polyurethane, it does not have an inner tube, it has cuffed and uncuffed both, it can be fenestrated or not, uh, it has a speaking valve, it is not armored and it is rigid. So, if you look into this picture, this is a cuffed tracheostomy tube. So, using this pilot balloon, basically you can instill some amount of air into this cuff. So, what happens is, uh, the tube will not get dislodged first thing and you can reduce the chances of aspiration. So, that is cuffed tube. Second example is cuffed versus uncuffed. Here you see, this is the cuffed tube, here this is uncuffed. So, in an uncuffed tube, it is fashioned in a way that you do not need to instill air to make sure that it does not displace or dislodge. So, it is fashioned in a way that it will not dislodge, it is made without the cuff. This is a metal tracheostomy tube, this is the outer tube, this is the inner cannula and this is the obturator. So, this is the metal tracheostomy tube which is also one of the traditional kind of tracheostomy tubes. These are also types of tracheostomy. So, this is the bivona kind which is uncuffed, this is the chile, the chile is the make and these are cuffless tubes, these are fenestrated tubes, if you look at here, these are the openings, fenestrations and this is metal Jackson tube. Again, this is fenestrated as well as cuffed. This is fenestrated but, it's, but this one is cuffless. Speaking valve is also one kind of tube. So, here in the speaking valve, this is a little expensive than the other tubes. What happens is, during the patient's inhalation, during time of inspiration, the cuff or the, the, the speaking valve, this uh, airway, this, is, this vent is open. But in case of expiration, this is closed. So, the air that gets trapped inside goes, travels up or is pushed up to the larynx, to the voice box and some amount of sounds are made. So, speaking valve basically helps the patient or assists the patient in improving the quality and kind of talk or speaking. So, there are also double cuffed kind of tubes that is available. So, this can be alternatively inflated. So, uh, pressure is not applied on one particular area of the trachea. So, uh, initially you can uh, inflate the cuff that is upward and then you can deflate this and inflate the second one. So, these are double cuffed tubes. So, the procedure as such, you make a slit into onto the skin. You also cut the subcute and the latissima. Then you strap the neck muscles and these muscles are retracted and when you are able to see the thyroid isthmus, what you do is uh, it is dissected or pushed upward and if there is any blood vessels that is encountered, it can be ligated. Incision is made onto the trickle wall and the tube is inserted. So, after the tube is inserted and is in place and the uh, necktie is put, you can put this, you put the sutures and the necktie is put. So, this is the basic procedure. There are various types of incisions that is made. made. Uh, it is based on the shape of the incision. This is T, this is box, this one is H, the next one is cruciate, the last one is U. Most commonly made type of incision is a longitudinal incision. So, in the procedure, the first thing that you can talk about is the anesthesia. General anesthesia is given to most of the patient, but sometimes in case of some emergency, local anesthesia is also preferred. The second one is position. So, basically the patient is put on a supine position with the neck extended. Incision, I have talked to you different types of incision but generally preferred is a uh, longitudinal incision. And as I told you, the tissue uh, dissection is made in the midline. The neck strap muscles are retracted and if the thyroid gland or the isthmus is encountered, it is either retracted upwards or a small slit or uh, is made or it is dissected. And preferably, it is the second or the third tracheal ring over which the slit is made and the tube is inserted. There are many complications while you do a tracheostomy, after you do a tracheostomy and over a longer period of time also. So, the most immediate complications as you see is bleeding, apnea, you can injure the adjacent blood vessels, injury can be to the esophagus and also laryngeal nerve injury. So, these are the immediate complications. Overinflation and underinflation can also be a reason. 
over inflation can cause excessive amount of pressure to the tracheal wall causing spasms while under inflation can cause dislodgement of the tube so intermediate complications are displacement of the tube pneumothorax and pneumomediastinum tube obstruction by crust or secretion that means after the tube is placed the placement of the tube is correct but what happens proper suctioning is not done which can lead to formation of crust or secretions and the tube gets blocked tracheoarterial fistula surgical emphysema or subcutaneous emphysema that means at the place of incision there is some amount of uh, some amount of air that gets trapped into the skin that is called as subcutaneous emphysema perichondritis is again an infection to the cartilaginous bone of the trachea uh, tracheal necrosis and tracheoesophageal fistula are other complications and also dysphagia the long term complications is tracheal stenosis decannulation problems that is sometimes you find it difficult to wean the patient out of tracheostomy so that can also be an issue disfiguring scar and tracheocutaneous fistula so these are the complications that you expect on a long term basis so today we have looked at what is tracheostomy what are the different indications types of tracheostomy the parts of tracheostomy the make material and different things like that and the procedure of tracheostomy in the video to come i would like to discuss on the tracheostomy care suctioning and the other details so i hope that you liked the video and kindly let me know your topic of interest your doubts clarifications and comments as well in the comment box thank you and have a great day